Hello, welcome to the fall 2024 section of Management 4103 and Management 5103. Uh, the reason I just stated two course names in this welcome video is because we do have students from two different classes merged into one class on Blackboard. That's because our undergrad and our master's version of this class um, have a lot of similarities. Uh, but because of the um, higher number of students enrolled in the 4103, the undergrad version, and the lower number of students in the 5103 version, uh, for the weeks that we have discussion-based assignments, um, it just helps to have a richer discussion when there's more students involved. Um, so I'll, I'll start by saying that as you look in the learning modules for your assignments, there will be two sets of instructions. One that says for 4103 students, that's the undergrad version of this class, business decision analysis, and another version of the instructions that says, um, you know, complete these instructions if you are a 5103 student, the business analytics techniques class. All right, now that we've gotten that out of the way, um, my name is Brian Vickers. Like I said at the beginning, um, I've been an instructor with the business administration department here at NSU for a few years now. Uh, prior to that, I was a student here. I went through the undergrad and uh, master's program at NSU. I am currently working on my doctorate in business intelligence. I uh, expect it to be completed in uh, December of next year, 2025. Um, this class is an asynchronous class, so uh, we won't have a dedicated meeting time. Instead, I've got all the learning modules set up with a, um, a, a time in which the assignments in those modules are due. Um, you're welcome to work ahead at your own pace as you have extra time available. In fact, uh, that's highly encouraged that you, uh, you know, ensure you don't fall behind by working ahead whenever you're able to. Uh, and I will make all the assignments uh, available um, starting with the uh, um, second week and on. Once we get through our orientation week, uh, I will open up everything for you guys to work ahead with the exception of uh, any discussion-based assignments will only be open for that module period just to make sure the discussions stay uh, timely and relevant and also the two exams will only be open for a three-day window uh, and those will we will get to when we talk about the schedule a little later um, since this is not an in-person class i would expect that um, any office hours we we uh, visit in will probably be uh, on zoom um, but I do keep office hours uh, for two hours in the morning on Thursday morning, as I do teach at Tahlequah campus Thursday afternoons. Um, otherwise, Monday through Wednesday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. are the best times to schedule an appointment uh, over Zoom with me. Uh, I do have other times available. I just need to make a, a, a appointment in advance, at least the day before, to make sure that I um, can be available for you. But um, uh, I do my best to try to make it work. Um, and also, even though I'm in Tahlequah for teaching, I do have a campus at Broken Arrow. I do live in the Tulsa area. So if need be, we can always meet at the Broken Arrow campus as well. All right. Um, as I said, asynchronous class, you've already taken business statistics at this point. Um, so there will be a little bit of revisiting of some of the things you learned in business statistics. Uh, there are eight chapters we're going to cover in this book, and that's what I've outlined on the second page here, um, along with some of the bullet points of topics we'll be covering. Um, under instructional methods and strategies, so there will be video demonstration for me. The uh, Most of the chapters, there will be a separate um, lecture recorded for the chapter material and the theoretical concepts, and then a, a second video in which um, if we have a problem set during that module, I'll go over the practice problems uh, from the book demonstrating how you might solve them or similar types of problems. Um, there will be a lot of Excel work in this class. Um, some of you are, are, are having a, a minor panic attack when I say the word Excel. Um, don't worry, I will be providing adequate, um, uh, you know, demonstration on how it works. And I'm very accessible. Uh, if you have questions, set up an appointment with me. Um, I I'm very responsive over email. I will, I will try to explain things in a way that doesn't assume you're an advanced user of Excel, even though we might be doing some advanced concepts. I really do try to work my way from the ba basics all the way up. And um, it's not really been a, a problem in, in my classes for students to get those concepts down um, shortly into the semester. So um, let's proceed. The textbook. So we're going to be using the second edition of a textbook called Essentials of Business Analytics. I believe there are, I think we're on the fifth edition of textbooks that are out However, I just personally don't think that there's been big enough strides in those editions to warrant 
requiring the fifth edition when you can get earlier editions for cheaper. I want you guys to save money on uh, these classes whenever possible. So I will be teaching out of the second edition because it's the copy that I have available. Um, however, if you get a copy of the third edition, fourth edition, fifth edition, because you find it cheaper, that's fine. The only one that won't work for this class is the first edition. There were a lot of uh, corrections made between the first and the second edition um, that are gonna leave you maybe a little lost at times. Uh, as I said, Excel is required for this class, not Google Sheets. Um, there are gonna be some um, uh, tools, some add-ins to Excel that are required in this class, they simply are not compatible in Google Sheets. There's not a, a although there's a lot of pros and cons to Sheets versus Excel, um, the, the specific things we're gonna be doing, including regression analysis, um, you just won't be able to do that in Sheets. Um, for that reason, if you are primarily using a Chromebook, um, Chromebooks do not have Microsoft Excel, that those will not work for this class. You are welcome to use the computer lab at, at, our, at our campuses. They're available 24-7. Um, you need a student ID to swipe to get in if you go in after hours. But I've had students go in and take their exam at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, uh, I mean, I, I, I used it on holidays when I was a student. So you can get in there after hours, um, re really any time of the day. So um, make sure that you um, have it in mind that you will need a, uh, you know, Windows-based PC or a Mac-based um, you know, uh, operating system uh, device uh, in order to have Excel installed on it, uh, or you can use one of the ones at MSU. Um, you can, if you don't have Office 365 with Excel, you, there's a link in the syllabus you can use to get it for free, or you can go right to the Microsoft site and log in with your student email and get it for free that way. Um, you, you have access to it as a student, you should take advantage of that and install it on uh, as many devices as it'll let you, uh, just say so you have it for you know later on when you're uh, uh, not a student anymore, at least you'll get a few, uh, you'll get until the next time it updates uh, out of it at least as well. Um, the assignments in this class, you'll see here add up to a thousand points total. We're gonna have two discussion activities, all eight chapters, there'll be a chapter quiz. Those are not worth, a ton of points individually, uh, but they add up to about 20% of your grade or exactly 20% of your grade. Um, the problem sets add up to nearly half of your grade. There's six of those. So there's eight chapters, six problem sets. That means the first chapter, and I think it's chapter nine, uh, there's not going to be a problem set. Those weeks are the weeks that we're going to have a quiz and a discussion activity instead of a quiz and a problem set. Uh, but if you add those up, they add up to 45% of your grade, 450 points. So the problem sets and the discussion activities are half your grade. Uh, the quizzes and the uh, two exams add up to the other half of your grade. That's the breakdown of those points. Um, overall, the grade is based on the percentage. Uh, so there's a potential that you know um, uh, an assignment is exempted for some reason, uh, technical difficulties uh, on the part of NSU or something like that, uh, and I uh, some emergency in which I have to exempt a grade. So note that while a thousand point scale is intended. It's possible that something happens and we don't do all the assignments, in which case, either way, your grade is based on the percentage of points earned out of points possible. Um, uh, please make sure you're checking Blackboard frequently. If there's any changes, I will try to give adequate notice. I will make an announcement about it in the announcement section and also email it to you. So. Um, there is a strong correlation of the amount of time students spend on Blackboard to the uh, grades they get. Um, more time you spend on their learning, access, accessing the course in order to check for any updates, planning ahead, um, the better you do. Um, there's a strong correlation. It's not a, it's not a guarantee, but uh, you know, as we'll look at uh, as we'll look at in this class, there is uh, there's something there. <laughs> um, if you email me which again is the best way to get a hold of me, please um, don't write the um, what you're emailing about in the subject line, like quiz or problem or something like that. Instead, write the name of the class in the subject line. That will help me um, uh, resolve it as, as quickly as possible is what I found. So just write the, the course number, MGMT 4103. You can even write BDA, standing for Business Decision Analysis. That's fine. 
Um, just try to write the course number in the subject line. You can add other stuff if you want, but that's really important. Otherwise, you know, I, I do teach five classes this fall and um, it, it just helps me to get the answer to you quicker. Uh, if you're gonna be submitting assignments, which I hope you are, uh, you need to do all of that via Blackboard. There's nothing gonna be um, submitted outside of Blackboard. Um, you can't email me because you can't get a whole, get through to Blackboard. I, I won't accept assignments via email. That's just a, a policy of the um, college. Um, so uh, for that reason, I, I encourage everyone not to try to wait until the last minute. I, I For most of these modules, you'll have a two week period in which to get it done instead of the usual one week. Um, try not to do it, you know, 11, 50 p.m. on a Sunday night when it's due, um, because that's when everybody's trying to get everything through. And sometimes the system gets overloaded um, when everyone's trying to submit things at one time. So uh, it's in your best interest to um, not wait to the last second. Uh, speaking of waiting to the last second, um, let's break down the late work policy of this class. So um, as far as whether or not I will accept work late, it, it depends on the type of assignment. And I've got my reasons spelled out in here. Um, but the initial post of your discussion activity, so what you initially write, um, I'm going to mark it down by 10% if you're one day late, 25% if you're two days late, 50% if you're three days late. After that, no credit. Um, now, on the discussion, you're required to, to give commentary on at least two other users. Um, that has to be done by the deadline. Um, commentary for other people, I don't want them to have to wait until after the due date to try to um, respond back to you. So I'm just not going to accept the commentary portion late. You can still get some credit by submitting the initial post late, which I will read. And, um, you know, there won't be any discussion really in those. And that's why there's a penalty. Uh, but the commentary portion where you're talking to other students, um, I wouldn't expect anyone to go back and revisit those posts after the due date. Um, and so everything should be timely. And so I won't accept that portion, but that's about a third of the grade. And then the other two thirds of the grade are on your initial post. Those are rough numbers. Um, the Excel based problem sets. So those ones, because those are strictly, you're going to turn it in. I'm going to grade it um, when I can get to it. Um, even though you have a two week period, I know things happen, um, unexpected emergencies happen, et cetera. So 10% um, late, 10% penalty if you're one day late. 25% of your two days late, 50% of your three days late, after that, zero points. So that's for all the problem sets. Uh, and then we come to the chapter quizzes and exams. I make them available for you to review as soon as the deadline passes. So if you wanna know what you, what you got right, what you got wrong, what the real answer was so that you can study for the, for the next um, quiz and exam right away, I make those available to you. Uh, so because the answer keys are essentially available to every student, I cannot accept quizzes or exams late, period. So if you do not do the quiz on time, you will get zero points. If you do not do the exam during that three-day window, which is open, you will get zero points. Um, those cannot be turned in late at all. So that's the breakdown. Um, any questions on any of that, reach out via email and we can discuss further. Um, let's talk about cheating. Uh, don't. Please don't. I have uh, uh, tolerance for a lot of things, but cheating and plagiarism are not the are not two of the things on that list. Um, if you cheat, if you plagiarize on your discussion post, um, on discussion posts, I'm interested in what you have to say. I'm not interested in what a chat bot has to say. I'm not interested in what anyone else has to say but you. Um, don't be worried about it being perfectly thought out. Um, you know, I, I want you to share your thoughts on it. And that's the most important thing. Um, and so for that reason, uh, if you cheat, if you plagiarize, if you turn in somebody else's work, if, if there's a one-to-one -one copy of problem sets, if you're using your phone during the exams, if, uh, you know, because the exams will be on lockdown browser, any kind of cheating of any kind, um, you know, and we have plagiarism detectors, we have AI detectors at this school, um, it's a 0% of the assignment. There's, this is the warning right here. If you do it and you're caught, you will get 0% on that assignment. Doesn't matter how many points it was worth. It could be a big assignment, zero points. If you do it two times this semester, you're just gonna get an F. It doesn't matter how many points you would have earned otherwise. I'm going to give you the letter grade of F if you cheat twice. So again, please don't cheat. Um, I will help you out to understand the work. We can get it done. 
Um, I, I'm not interested in it being a perfectly thought out, uh, um, you know, essay on their discussion board post. Don't plagiarize your discussion board post. Just share your thoughts uh, with me. All right. Um, problem sets. We use Excel, and with Excel, you're expected to basically be making a functional spreadsheet in which all of your formulas and functions, et cetera, are used with uh, Excel-based formulas and functions to, to, to take a bunch of inputs, transform them into outputs. Um, so you're going to have you know, references to other cells. Um, if if in, the, in the cell where I designate for you to put your answer, you just have typed in the answer, I don't care about the answer. The answers can be found online. The answers are found, I mean, I, I know that there's homework helpers out there. And that's why I don't care about the answers. I care about you solving the problem and the methodology that's used to solve the problem. So for that reason, um, you know, I'm looking for formulas being used. I'm looking for evidence that the problem was solved, not that the answer is written in. Um, you, if you submit just a sheet full of answers and, and no work being performed in Excel, you could get as much as zero zero percent um, on that. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a, a completed uh, a train of thought from point A to point B of, of figuring out why the answer is what it is. Um, uh, occasionally, there'll be some spots where you need to write out your answer uh, in Excel. I'll, I'll have a little text box in there, uh, and I provide you a template to use for all of these assignments. It makes it easier for you to, um, to go through the uh, process of it. It makes it easier for me to grade, and sometimes there'll be a text box for you to write an answer. Anytime there's a written answer, I expect it to be written in a way as if you were um, working at a business giving your uh, findings in a professional manner. So professional writing, spelling, grammar, those are things that are looked at in the writing portion of it. Um, while you're working in problem sets, I have a check my work quiz. So if you've ever used like McGraw-Hill um, Connect, you know that you can check your work on problem sets and it tells you what's wrong. I recreate that in Blackboard. Um, I give you three attempts at it. I ask like five or six questions about the problem set. And you can type in the answers that you got to see if you're on the right track or not. Um, so these are grade previews. They, they don't guarantee any, any particular grade. They don't guarantee you got it right. Um, but uh, they do provide a, a likelihood that you're on the right track. And uh, students have told me they find this very helpful um, when they are you know, unsure of two possible ways to figure it out. And one of those comes back correct on the check your work quiz. Um, so please take advantage of those. It, you know, they're not worth any points, but they will help your score on the problem sets. All right, here's a big one on the problem sets. You can work with a partner. Um, I will provide, if you know anyone in the class, you can partner up with them. If not, there's going to be a, um, a post in the discussion board called um, looking for group. You can post your availability and uh, see if anybody wants to partner up with you. So you'll put basically both your last names on the problem set name. So, you know, problem set one, Smith and Jones. And then both of you will submit a copy of that file. You know, one of you emails it to the other or whatever after you're done working on it together. Um, you both submit it and then you both end up with the same grade. Uh, as long as there's no problems on here, you know, um, that, that might arise, um, it, it's pot potential that I might, you know, uh, rescind that availability. But, um, you know, this is something I think is great because you're in business are gonna have to collaborate with other people. Um, so it's great for you. And then um, you get your grades faster because it's one one less paper I have to grade, right? <laughs> I grade one for two people. So it's a win-win for everybody involved, honestly. Um, so highly encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, it'll help you walk through your thoughts on it. Um, I find that you know people compliment each other on uh, knowing some things versus not knowing the others and filling in those gaps in knowledge. Um, all right, um, we kind of covered the integrity policy as far as, you know, if you're citing a source to avoid plagiarism issues, um, doesn't mean you can just copy an entire, um, you know, book word for word and then put who, it, who, it's, uh, who it's by and, and, and think that that's not plagiarism. That's plagiarism where you told me where you got it from. Um, so, you know, please review um, Things like Purdue OWL uh, has the uh, APA guidelines for writing and, and giving um, giving credit and citation for avoiding plagiarism. Um, and I will put links on the Blackboard um, 
for that purpose. Um, and I think we can jump ahead um, to the class assignment. So here's the breakdown of uh, what our plan topic is and what the due dates are. You see most of these are about two week periods. Uh, module zero orientation, there's gonna be a syllabus acknowledgement. Um, that's gonna be your week one attendance. Since this is an online class, we don't have a meeting time. You'll need to do this by the end of the first week for me to count you as having attended class. Um, if you don't, that could affect your financial aid. So please get that done. But then your module one is also open right now for you to start working on it. You'll have about two weeks to get it done. That's due by the um, uh, September 1st. All right, uh, briefly, I'm just gonna show you the layout on Blackboard. So this is that module zero, module one. You can see that um, even though they're both gonna be open right away, um, you need to have that syllabus done by this week, the Sunday at the latest, and then the following Sunday for your chapter one work, uh, your module one work. And then the breakdown um, throughout there, you can click into that folder, it'll have all your assignments and links to all the assignments. Um, you'll notice that module five and 10 are your exams. They are only open from Monday to Wednesday of those weeks. So you'll have three days to get them done. Um, if you miss it, you're gonna lose 15% of your total grade. Don't miss it. <laughs> Make plans to have a, uh, you know, a 90 minute block somewhere in that 72 hour period uh, blocked off for you to get those exams done. Um, the discussion board will be here. Um, I have been using video discussion boards up until this past semester. I was using flip.com, but flip.com is no longer uh, in operations. So if I can find an alternative by the start of class, I will continue using video discussions. Otherwise, it will be a written discussion. Um, that is to be determined. I will make a separate announcement by uh, week one uh, opening uh, as to uh, which type of discussion we'll be doing. All right, I think that about wraps it up. So um, thank you everyone uh, for enrolling in this class. I look forward to uh, uh, some wonderful uh, gains in, in knowledge and um, development for everyone uh, throughout the semester. And please email me anytime any questions pop up, even if it's the middle of the night, my phone will be on silent and I won't see it to the morning, but that's, uh, you know, I'd rather you do it when you're thinking about it than to forget to email me at all. So. All right, thanks.